Hey guys, I'm Chef Jake Caputo and this is my restaurant Espuma, in, located in beautiful Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. So welcome inside. We're going to show you our candle room. This is our front dining room. We use it for private parties. We also use it for regular dining. If we don't have a private party, we call it the candle room because of all the candles on the wall. Genius name right now. We're, really, we're gearing up for a really busy night tonight. We've got a lot of reservations. This is our main dining room. We've got about 55 seats in the main dining room. Um, soft colors, sort of a Spanish feel to it. But what awaits you inside is really a culinary oasis. We're excited to serve our, for our guests tonight. We're excited to cook for you. So today we're going to be cooking one of my favorite foods, Maine lobster. Um, we're going to steam it in some ocean water. We're going to serve it with some super sweet cherry tomatoes that I got at the farmer's market yesterday, some local sweet corn, and it uh, sounds complex but really a simple soy gas treat. But first what we're going to do is go get some ocean water so we can steam these lobsters. Got the ocean water. Let's go make some lobster. We're gonna put it right in the pot and cook our lobster. So we have our nice fresh lobster. He's, he's feisty, he's sweet, he's ready to go. We got our ocean water boiling. We're gonna put it in for about five minutes and 30 seconds and we're gonna get started on the rest of our dish. So these tomatoes are fresh from the farmer's market, these sweet little cherry tomatoes. So we're just gonna quarter them. So we've got this banana pepper fresh from the farmer's market as well. We're going to put in with our cherry tomatoes. Beautiful. The balance of flavors with the spiciness of the pepper and the sweetness of the tomato. We also have some fresh Thai basil. So we're going to make a soy gastric. And gastric is basically a fancy word for uh, sweet and sour syrup. Um, and I'll show you why that is. So we start with half a cup of sugar, put it in our pot and we're going to caramelize our sugar right next to our lobster. I'll put my scallions in with the rest of the ingredients and we're going to go back to our soy gastric on the stove. Our sugar is nice and caramelized. We're going to add some sherry vinegar. We're going to add our soy sauce to that and let it reduce down to a syrup, sort of the consistency of maple syrup. So our lobster's ready, we're going to pull it out of the water and we'll put it right into some ice water to stop the cooking process. We're going to cut some celery to go with our uh, corn. We have some uh, shallot, so we're going to dice the shallot about the same size as the celery and the corn. So now our corn sauteing nicely. we got the celery and shallots in there. We're going to add a little bit of ground coriander and cumin. That's going to give it a really nice flavor. A little fresh ground pepper. As we twist the head and the tail in opposite directions. So I'll twist forward with the head and backwards with the tail. So this lobster is perfectly cooked. If you look at it, it's not um, like stark white like the plate. It's just a little opaque. Um, it's got a perfect texture, and we, we tried a little piece. It's seasoned perfectly from the ocean water. It's perfect. You get that balance of flavor from the banana pepper, the Thai basil, the tomatoes. We're just going to put these right on the side of the plate, on one side. Got all the different colors. It looks beautiful. Warm corn relish with the toasted cumin. We'll put that on the other side of the plate. We have our lobster tail, perfectly cooked. I'm going to put that right on top of our corn. I'm going to take our soy gastric, which has been reduced to perfection, just to a syrup. The aroma is amazing, and we'll just drizzle it with a little extra virgin olive oil to finish the dish. So here we have our ocean water steamed Maine lobster with a sweet corn and cumin relish. A marinated cherry tomato salad with Thai basil and our soy gastric. 
To make a long story short, I ended up dropping out of college three months before graduation, much to the chagrin of my parents. I, I vowed that day I was going to make them proud, I was going to do what I had to do to uh, come through for them, and I ended up putting myself through the Culinary Institute of America. I moved to San Francisco for my externship, and then immediately back after graduation, and I said um, I was going to work in great kitchens. So I started out at Farallon, I took a job in pastry, um, and which turned out to be a, a fantastic um, decision for my career. About six or seven months, I finally got a shot on the hotline, and you know I, I worked there and I did pretty well. And um, the sous chef one day, I came to work, and the sous chef had done the schedule for the next week, and all of a sudden I was on the grill station. Now the grill station at Fairline is like super challenging. It's it's a uh, wood fire, it's a charcoal fired grill, so you have to constantly feed the fire. Um, you got to rake the coals, and it's really busy. And when we, were, when we first opened, we were doing like five, six hundred dinners on a Saturday night. It was crazy. I'm prepping the grill station. It comes about five o'clock, and we're ready for service. And I, I go to the sous chef, his name's Park. I said, Park, you know, I'm, I'm not 100% sure I know all the temperatures. I'm going to be like, you know, able to do this. And he looks at me and he says, well, it's okay. I'll work the station and you can just trail behind me. And I said, what? There is no chance in hell I'm going to, you know, go down like that. And if I make a, you know, a mistake, he'll be there to help me, but I'm not going to follow him. He's going to follow me. And in a year, he's going to be, you know, walking in my footsteps. I'm not going to be walking in his. So, um, Farallon was a really great experience. That's why I really learned um, to be a really good line cook. Um, I moved through, through that place and then I was offered the sous chef job, but um, I have decided to move to Boston. Followed the girl to Boston. The first place that I called, it was called Radius. Radius had just opened to a lot of fanfare. The chef was um, very well known in Boston and now is very well known outside of Boston, um, Michael Schlau. I learned about um, just precise plating and, and you know slower cooking and things like that where um, at Farallon everything was like bang, 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 you know, fast, fast, fast. And an opportunity came available and I jumped out. I wasn't being true to my own culinary integrity, which is extremely important to me. Um, so, you know, I took the opportunity and, and um, opened the Spuma and it's been gravy ever since.